tech layoffs are surging. Over 25,000 roles already cut just in the month of January. We saw PayPal cutting 9% of their roles. 2,500 people gone. Microsoft cut 1,900 people from their gaming division. Unity cut 1,800 people. That's 25% of their workforce. Amazon Twitch cut 35%. Discord cut 17%. And there's a whole string of other layoffs in the tech industry here. We have a tech jobs chart here showing a notable decline in tech roles according to Indeed where jobs in software, IT, and information has just gone downhill. Coding may just be dead. Now may be a good time to consider a side hustle or learning new skills to take your career or productivity to the next level. Allow me to introduce you to Skillshare, our featured sponsor of the day. Now, email marketing is one of the most powerful tools today which you can actually learn right now with a class on Skillshare. This year, invest in yourself. So if you haven't tried it yet, Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives, featuring a world-class community that connects teachers and members with thousands of classes on topics like marketing, entrepreneurship, video, business, and productivity. Learning Paths is one of their newest features. Their hand-picked classes meant to be taken in order that build on one another, reinforcing lessons. So this one here walks you through building an email marketing strategy where experienced marketers will teach you everything you need to build your subscriber list from scratch to engage your customers. I know you're excited, here's the good news. Just for tech lead viewers, the first 500 people to use the link in the description below are getting a free one month trial to Skillshare. Get started today. I mean, we're talking massive fundamental changes underway here. I tried to warn you guys. I made these videos. Coding is dead. Apps are dead. And what do you guys do? You just sat back, laughed at me. My concern here for your safety is that I may be vastly smarter than you and you just, you don't acknowledge it. Now, amidst this backdrop of tech layoffs, this comes at an interesting time when so many YouTubers are quitting, retiring really rich. So there's this wealth gap between 9 to 5 employees and influencers, which is something I've talked about before, where we have these two class of people, right? Half of millennials are basically poor. They can't afford anything and they're stuck in these dead end 9 to 5 jobs. And the other half, they're raking it in with Lamborghinis and Gucci and Rolexes, living in these mansions, traveling all the time. And isn't it funny we now have the social media trend that watch me lose my job on TikTok. And so tech workers are filming their layoffs and sharing them on social media for views. So while their nine to five jobs are burning down, their social media channels are thriving. And you see these people finally wakening up to that. So here's what I think is happening. We essentially reached a local maximum in technology where we invented basically digital drugs, social media, where everybody is now just addicted to this digital opioid and they're just vegetating in front of their screens watching short videos, TikTok videos, YouTube videos like this one. And nobody really wants to do anything else. People are just totally content. People don't need to buy anything. They don't need to download new apps or websites. It's kind of like building someone a TV and then asking them if they want anything more from you and the apps or websites or services. No, they, they just want to watch their shows now. And so in a way, content became the new software where a lot of value creation shifted from the tech stack, the infrastructure of building that first TV now that it's built, we don't need the builders for that. We just need someone to maintain this TV. And then value shifts into the show's creation. It's kind of like the movie industry where, you know, the sound engineers and the stage engineers and production designers, they don't really get paid much, but it's the show stars who get paid the most. And so similarly, at the time when Twitch is laying off 35% of its staff, software engineers, managers, college educated nine to five folks, its top star and streamer, Pokimane, is leaving Twitch voluntarily. She's not being laid off here, folks, with the rumors of her finding a potentially $75 million deal. So it's just funny. There is this divide where some people are leaving the company because they're fired, and then some people are leaving because they're, they're retiring, basically. They're done. But still, with all of this quitting, whether voluntarily or not, I think it reflects a low opportunity, low growth, stagnant era that we're living through where there's just nothing really exciting going on. A lot of technology that should have taken off like Web3, the metaverse, AI, it didn't really get too far. You know, AI may have some potential, but it's also the playground mostly of big tech companies that have the data and GPUs to train on. Most normal people aren't going to be doing that. The ChatGPT store was kind of a buzz. It was just wrappers on ChatGPT. You've got Apple Vision Pro, pretty expensive, limited market. And that should be clear by now, apps and websites are long dead. People stopped using those as soon as they began vegetating on short form videos. 
And so with everybody vegetating on digital drugs, the game industry is also suffering because it simply costs too much per minute of entertainment. We can see US consumer spending on gaming here, which is down 14.5% in the past three years. And it's basically a stagnant industry in an area where there continues to be inflation and rising costs. So a lot of companies are seeing weak consumer demand. All the meanwhile, YouTube ad sales soared $9.2 billion in a blowout quarter as they're firmly back in growth mode after a quiet year last year. On a wider scale, interest rates continue to stay high at 5.3%, which limits investment into a lot of these companies and salaries because investors can just get a 5.3% risk-free through treasuries. Now, in addition, last year, I think it was really Elon Musk who kicked off all of the firings when he fired 80% of Twitter's workforce, saving the company massive amounts of money, cutting bloat. And so a lot of other tech CEOs probably saw that too and realized they wanted to cut through all of the management bloat as well. So Instagram here is also announcing they're cutting a level of management. The TPM role or technical program manager is essentially being eliminated at Instagram in what Mark Zuckerberg called the year of efficiency aimed at removing layers of management. The result was thousands of layoffs last year and reduction in management ranks. And this effect was probably also compounded by overhiring during the pandemic, as well as hopes that AI can possibly help improve some of the efficiency of current workers. Although general consensus seems that AI is not behind the current wave of layoffs, that is coming later on. Now, another potential factor behind tech layoffs is Section 174, a new tax bill that came into effect last year, which essentially made software engineering salaries non-deductible in the first year. You have to amortize that cost over five years with only 10% deductible in the first year. So a quick example, let's say you have a startup team that hires a team of engineers and it costs a million dollars in salaries, but you also make a million dollars in revenue. So net profit is say zero. But now with this rule, you actually owe taxes on 900K in the first year. And so now you have to find a way to get the money. You can't take a loan out because interest rates are so high. And so you, you just got lay off people now. Now there are efforts to get this bill changed urgently as we speak to keep software engineering jobs in the US, but the industry is changing. These days, everybody and their dog is coding. Immigrants are coding. Fresh college grads are coding. ChatGPT is coding. It's becoming an oversaturated field where employers are realizing they don't need to pay you 300 to 500K and free cafeteria food for two hours of work a day. Right? Maybe that was the good old days when programmers were viewed as modern day wizards and coding was a rare skill, but these days, the infrastructure behind this job industry is just so built out that you can go hire a coder anywhere you want off the streets. You can just get ChatGPT to do it. So what now? I know some of you are going to say, I don't care what this tech lead guy says. I love coding. I love programming. I'm going to do it. If you love coding, then nothing can stop you from doing it. Fine. You know what I like? I like eating ice cream. That doesn't make it a job. Oh, I love ice cream. I love the ice cream. I love code. Who cares? Right? What's, what's the income of that? Everybody loves to code. I love coding. I don't code because it's not profitable. You know, I would love to sit here and code an app or game for you, but what's the point? No one would use it or download it and it would get no views. Now, if you do find yourself getting laid off, here's my suggestions. Number one, do not answer any urgent emails from HR. Don't attend those meetings. Just call in sick, right? Or say, hey, you know what? You forgot or, or you're busy on some assignment and Use that additional time to download anything you need off of your laptop, get all of your stuff off of there. And then if you want my advice, don't go on social media like TikTok or YouTube posting about getting fired or losing your job. In retrospect, and I had done this as well, it's not really worth the 15 minutes of fame unless you're really just done with the tech industry because you could always just go get another job if you get laid off. It may be a bit of a longer job search though. You know, someone had recently asked a question on Twitter, who wants to work at Fang? And nobody really wanted to anymore. And I think part of the reason for that, along with the Zoomer generation's condition of anti-work and overall laziness is simply, they go on TikTok and Instagram and shorts, and they see these hustlers out there, young people no older than themselves with Lamborghinis, traveling, living it up, entrepreneurs, running their own businesses, freedom, flexibility. And they think, yeah, maybe that's what they want. And that is the wealth divide where you've got half of the people out there just enjoying their lives, living it up, and then the other half watching them. 
and they're stuck in these dead end nine to five jobs where they're being laid off as well because those influencers are out there sucking all the attention and time and value away from the apps and websites and services that those other people are building we're in this attention economy and so all the value is just being sucked out of traditional tech which is this industry that's just fully matured and oversaturated now and the workers at these tech companies with their valuable two weeks of vacations per year they don't really want to work too hard either because they see those influencers online living their free-flowing lifestyles people like pokemon getting their 75 million dollar contracts and they were the ones these workers who had put in the long hours studying staring at computer screens grinding their lead code practice questions going through hurdles and hurdles of interview questions and loops they were the ones who were supposed to live the high life and now they get to live the low life and their life is about to get a lot harder too because the job of a software engineer is going to become like the job of a garbage man like a plumber like somebody working at a sewage plant for 12 hours a day because they can take it there's too many workers too many people are willing to take on that job you've got too much competition and as the working conditions get worse and worse where each person now takes on the role of two or three other people who are laid off it's not like we're going to go back to that golden era of software engineers where they were paid 300 400k salaries and got free food free money now that's over by now that was a fluke of history when the internet was first invented but that era is no more and arguably the same oversaturation can be said for influencers as well there's way too many people out there these days you have to continually find new frontiers greener pastures you know what job i think is rare these days bitcoiner there's not many bitcoiners out there anyways that's all i've got hope you enjoyed the video see you in the next one thanks bye